Everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Colette. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. It's great to have you, and and a brand new MVP as well. It's always exciting to talk to people that are uh, that are brand new to the program and uh, hear their stories. But for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Uh, so I'm Clément Serafin. Uh, so by my accent, you can hear I'm French, uh, living in Paris. Uh, so basically, I'm making uh, crazy subjects uh, during all the year, and uh, my last one is principally Microsoft Mesh, uh, which shares the 3D environments uh, you can use on Teams to improve the collaboration. Uh, so yeah, since um, since um, January, it has been generally available. Uh, so I was already working on this subject for two years since uh, the COVID take place. I was really working on digital workspace uh, to improve collaboration uh, when all people were working remotely. And so I was really interested about it. Uh, and so I continued and finally Microsoft released this product. Uh, so I'm really happy now to make uh, my whole subject about it. Uh, so I participate to different conferences to present the product, its uh, advanced functionalities. And uh, the little twist I like to make is in every city I'm speaking, uh, I'm designing uh, a fully 3D environment uh, with the city. So I reproduced some monuments of Lausanne in Switzerland. Uh, New York as well, or uh, as well for the club days in Madrid, some elements of Madrid, like the stadium. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. No, and I know that that was a, it, it started to really kind of heat up as a topic, as you said, during the, the pandemic, where, uh, but for a long time, I mean, where I first uh, uh, really started to see applications of the, 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 the VR and AR capability was around the accessibility space um, prior to the pandemic. Uh, and, and so it was interesting to see how far along some of the technologies were. And that was actually uh, a, a question. I was at an event in Salt Lake City here uh, a, a few years back where I, I was kind of doubtful a, a, about how far along the space was. And that there was a showcase of vendor solutions uh, that were pretty incredible, that were mostly around, a lot of them were around the education space. So for going, you know, building classes, uh, um, you know, for teaching virtually, things like that. And I asked the question, I was like, yeah, but how much of this is is real and affordable for people? It's like, no, it's av been available. It's available through Steam. Microsoft has various options available. Like it's all out there in use today. Like these are real examples, not, just future looking, hey, eventually we'll all be working like this. No, it's like, no, this is how it's being used today. Yeah, so it's initially it was made by design for video games. Uh, so it was pretty popular uh, in this way. After this, we started to have some serious products. Uh, two years ago, Microsoft made an announcement about their partnership with Meta. And so they released the MetaQuest Pro, uh, which is really a professional device. Uh, and so it started and continued, uh, and now Apple uh, is coming with the Vision Pro. And so it's giving us more and more elements to go on those technologies. So following the Gartners are saying it will be all the metaverse technology will be pretty mature uh, in something like five to six years. Uh, so yeah, currently devices are continue evolving. Uh, they are cheaper, so now we can uh, afford them. And uh, we are going more and more in some use case in industry uh, with those type of VR headsets. So it's pretty good to see that developing. I know there's another complaint of like how bulky the, how big the headsets are. 
Uh, I know it's not a thing yet, but I mean, someday we're, we'll have like the uh, like the mesh net syndrome of injured necks. <laughs> ah, um, <laughs> yeah, about devices. that. Uh, uh, recently, we have a, a Chinese brand which is called uh, so they are called the Xrel. Uh, so they made glasses and they are just wearing something like less than 100 grams. And so you can wear them all the day. And so they are starting to miniaturize, miniaturize, miniaturize. And so basically, so I have them on, on, the, sh on the chamber, but uh, we have the Rainy OX2. It's a little glasses. And so they have micro LED, transparent micro LED. And so you can wear them all the day without any weight issue. Uh, so yeah. basically, it's the first model of this kind, which is totally miniaturized. So it's not supporting a lot of apps like Microsoft, Mesh, etc. But it's a good proof of concept on how we can miniaturize to reach more uh, efficiency through AR and VR. Yeah. I well I mean year uh, we we all kind of poked fun at years ago like the Apple, you know, the the uh we call them the uh, the glass holes, um the people walking <laughs> around with the glasses on. You know, but the uh, like I've always been I'm not as much of a uh, um uh, I'm not as focused on what like the pure VR experience. I mean, it's there's exciting stuff that's happening and if you go even if you're doubtful folks that are uh, if you've not tried the headsets you think, and I'm not going to go to a virtual classroom and walk in. It's amazing how much, how quickly your mind adapts to the virtual space and move around, and how incredible it is. Like my first experience was doing the uh, the diving board app, which is uh, you know virtually <laughs> you go in and into enter a building on a street, go in an elevator, and you come out and you're on a diving board like 30 <laughs> stories up and to end the game, you have to step off the diving board and how incredibly hard it is to step <laughs> off. And it's fun to watch people that are in the environment uh, doing that. No, but like the the augmented reality capabilities are exciting. When you think of the applications, Microsoft has the two products that are out there. You have one, like they, they, they showcased this in a partner conference or build, you know, a few years back. Um, I think it was Ignite a few years back, but where yes, one of them was a, like, uh, on that, they have the HoloLens, yeah. and so with the HoloLens, you have the possibility of this mixed reality to have some virtual elements in your, in your hands. And, uh, so they made the example about an airport management, uh, to have real time uh, plane, uh, which were landing on a miniaturized airport. And they were just put that, you know, they were in different places and just put that on one table. It's just a blank table and they were able to exchange about it. Uh, so currently on the mixed reality, uh, we don't have a lot of evolution because the HoloLens cost uh, of $4,000 was a lot. But so th that's why they tried to make a turn on uh, virtual reality with Mesh. Uh, which is currently more affordable. But I think mixed reality will come back soon. Uh, they talked about uh, Dynamics 365 VR and mixed reality. So you have the possibility to have some data on Dynamics directly in the industry. Uh, so yeah, it will come back uh, because now the electronics is cheaper. So you have way to have more device. And so yeah, basically, so normally in September, uh, we will have a brand new device, uh, which is called the Space Top. Uh, so it's just a laptop without any screen. Uh, you just have a laptop, but no screen. You just have a pair of glasses, which are linked to the computer, and it will provide you an infinite number of screen to work. Uh, so yeah, it's progressing, and uh, so I, I'm really happy to see you no know, mesh has been released. Uh, so we can present some use cases uh, which are really good. So like when you are developers, initially you know you have some developers at your company. They take one room. Uh, they made the kanban on the on the on the wall, 
and so they take a lot of space and when you need to to get the room it's pretty messy uh, it's really it's really hard to to have flex office with them because they need their space and they need to put all their kanban all elements of developing targets sprint etc but no yeah. with mesh they can directly make a virtual project room they have infinite amount of wall uh, they have an infinite kanban and so they can stay fully remote so yeah it's still better to meet face to face but it's a way to provide them a project room uh, which is yeah which is a better way than just uh, destroying a room with a full kanban and a lot of right. stickers it is loop available yet in that space no not yet <laughs> so the last thing yeah, that has been I, yeah. uh, the last things which has been released are the web slates. So you still need to make some uh, low code developing, but it's just to have a web page. So you can have a web page and put everything you want. So you can put a loop if you want in this web page, mm -hmm. but it's not natively supported like, oh, okay, I'm taking a loop and I can interact with the Kanban directly on VR. Now it's coming, but uh, not, uh, not in general availability right now. Well, let me ask you, let me kind of back up and talk, talk about it. So what, uh, earning your, your uh, MVP status, because what was that process like for you? Like, what was your, how did you hear about the program? How did you get started? Oh, so multiple years ago, uh, I made multiple consulting companies and I was never satisfied because searching every time other experts to exchange with. And so I was like, okay, so I am on a consulting company and Oh, uh, so I'm the older one, so I need to change company to find other experts. And so I stopped that. Basically, I just stayed in my company and discover communities. So someone, which is called Sebastian Paulet in France, uh, made me discover uh, one community, which is the AMP community. So we are making with this community event all around the world. And so it's, it told me, yeah, you're pretty good at what you are doing, Clément. You should come with me and talk to it. And so that's all multiple years ago, I start conferences. And so I keep doing conferences through all of France and continuing through all Europe. And last month that was talking to at New York. Uh, so yeah, I continued and continued and continued and it was always a pleasure to exchange, to have new subjects and so now I, I know this lot of 30 people which are MVP in France. Uh, it's a huge friendship, we are exchanging together every day and so one day uh, Eve come to me and tell me, yeah, don't you want to be MVP? If you want, I will nominate you. And so I start, uh, I make my, my first nomination. Uh, during my first nomination, uh, I was not selected because I was uh, too crazy making something like five or six different technologies during the year, talking about poor platforms, security, identity, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they told me, no, the MVP program is to be an expert in your domain, passionate about what you are doing. And I said, okay, yeah, I like mesh. I like doing that. So let's focus on that. And so during Two years, I continued on Mesh and deep dive, deep dive, deep dive, and so presented. And I saw people started to be interested in it uh, by, by Mesh. And so two years ago, I made uh, my second attempt, and that's why it's good. And so, yeah, uh, so it's really a community. Um, when we are, so things which are good is because I'm young and was really afraid uh, because MVP are like experts. It's complicated. I was like, it's complicated to talk to them. I'm just a, a kid, you know, <laughs> yeah. experimented. And so, no, they were really open-minded. Uh, every MVP accepted me on LinkedIn. You just send them a message. I directly answer, ready to help because, uh, yeah, it's their mindset. 
So yeah, yeah it's well, a yeah, really like welcoming community. To you. It's like I, I'm always happy to connect with other MVPs because we're and I, it's something that I tell people you know constantly is like, look, don't don't be nervous, don't be afraid of reaching out to somebody if you see if they are a Microsoft MVP. Uh, and you see this across MVPs and other technologies with other companies as well. They're some of the most connected, open to connecting with people. That's why they're MVPs, is that they love to connect. We love to connect and hear the stories. Let's, you know, I, I would especially, I've not had one in a while. Like, I don't know about you, but I love it when people come and say, hey, would you be interested in maybe co-presenting on something? I'm like, I'm, wait, to go and get to present and plug into a new community and not have to do all the work? Yes, <laughs> I'd be happy to co-present. Like, bring those offers to co-present. Um, but it, it's it's that is something where like don't be nervous. People need to reach out and talk to the MVPs. That's part of what we do is community constant community outreach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a pleasure now we can communicate with a lot of people, meet a lot of people, and so yeah. Now I'm pleased because one time per month I can go on a city and talk about what passionate me and share with people. Uh, sometime when I'm talking about some security subject, they were like not aware of things, and so so sometimes they are afraid because when they are not aware of things in security, they are really afraid. But they are happy yeah. as well to to learn about it, and so yeah, no, I so I had the pleasure to meet Caruana, uh, so yeah, I met her last week, and it was really a pleasure because. Uh, even if she is on the top of Microsoft board, uh, she is really open. She she is really here to talk, and her session was really mind blowing because uh, she was explaining how Microsoft is working so fluently. It's uh, just a pleasure to share with her. Yeah, uh, Caruana Gatimu. For folks that don't know Caruana, who uh, uh, pretty senior within the N three six five organization. Uh, she is very community oriented. So she comes from, so she's a personal friend. Before she joined Microsoft, she and I launched the first SharePoint Saturday in Los Angeles and worked together on that. And, uh, you know, she was very involved in user groups. And so she very much understands the power of the importance of community. And she was a major driver behind the adoption.microsoft.com site as well. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, there are great people that you'll meet within the mix. And last question for you: um, So, what what are kind of the hot topics right now that you're looking at? Is there any kind of things that are coming up which you're really focusing in on that people should be paying attention to? Uh, yep. Uh, so currently, I'm working on passkeys. Uh, yeah. So yeah, passkeys is a new security subject which is coming in global preview. Uh, so it's new security stuff I appreciate and you can deploy in your company. Uh, so don't hesitate to try the preview uh, for Mesh as well if you want. Uh, so Microsoft have a link and you can enjoy six months preview free uh, from Microsoft to test Mesh in your environment. Oh, very cool. Well, I'll have to go grab a link and make sure that's in the blog post and out on YouTube. And uh, for that, you know, Clement, really appreciate your time and nice to meet you. And hopefully uh, you'll be coming out to the MVP Summit next spring, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to book my plane now. Uh, so I'm just taking yeah. dates. And uh, no, normally I think it's end of March. Uh, so I have to, to book my plane and uh, yeah, to, to go to the MVP Summit and meet you. Well, hope to meet you there. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Wow. Wow.